Hey everybody, welcome to another session of Spirit Wars Online Disciple You class. I'm glad that you joined us today. We're going to be talking about treating yourself kindly. What does that mean? How, what does the Bible say about treating ourselves kindly? You know, one of the schemes evil spirits employ is to deceive people into believing that mistreating themselves is somehow spiritual. See, many believers are convinced that they please God when they think of themselves as losers or low lives or as sinners. You see, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29 says, For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church. When we live in anything less than righteousness, peace, and joy, we are not experiencing everything that our Lord paid for. John 10.10 10 puts it like this. Jesus puts it like this. He says, The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come that you may have life and have it to the fullest, to have it more abundantly. You see, it's so important that we, don't, that, that we do not get the thief and the Lord mixed up. So I want to pack this idea of conviction versus condemnation. You see, both conviction and condemnation feel a lot alike. They can both have the same feeling, but you can but play completely different roles. You see, conviction actually leads you to Christ, while condemnation leads you away from Him. Condemnation says this. It says, you lied, therefore you're a liar. You got drunk, so therefore you must be an alcoholic. Condemnation tries to convince us that our bad action is the fruit of being a bad person. Yet, on the other hand, conviction says, you are way too awesome to act like that. You see, conviction reminds us of our God-given identity and calls us to act like a son or a daughter of God, not like a sinner. You see, if we listen to the devil, he will convince us that we are bad people who deserve punishment. It is impossible to experience real joy while believing we are evil. See, remember when Jesus died on the cross for us, he changed our nature. We became part of the royal family. And one way, one healthy way to remind ourselves that we are a child of God, whether you're extroverted, whether you're an introverted person, whether you're a man, a female, a woman, doesn't matter what it is, the way we can remind ourselves that we are part of that royal family is simply to talk to ourselves. Now, I know what you're thinking. Talking to yourselves might be a little weird. Well, it only gets weird if you start answering yourselves and having discussions with yourself. Well, maybe that's not even that weird because I actually do that for myself too. But what I mean by talking to yourselves is declaring the Word of God over your life. You see, a study was conducted on this idea of self-talk. And the study concluded that the average person hears over 1,200 words a minute of self-talk. The study found that 1,100 of these words are negative in most people. See, if you add to the fact that we tend to trust ourselves more than anyone else, what do you think happens when we speak negatively? We punish ourselves or we simply talk down to ourselves. What happens is that we destroy our self-confidence. We destroy our own confidence. We kill our self-esteem when we talk neg negatively about ourselves. And ultimately, we end up in the boneyard of depression, hopelessness, and fear. So what I'd like to do right here is just take a quick moment to practice self-declaration, to practice becoming part of that royal family. So if you can, I want you to declare with me this. This will be on the screen. I am powerful, and what I believe changes the world. So today... I declare God is in a good mood. He loves me all the time. Nothing can separate me from his love. Jesus' blood paid for everything. I will tell nations of what he has done. I am important. How he made me is amazing. I was designed for worship. My mouth establishes praise to silence the enemy. Everywhere that I go, becomes a perfect health zone. And with God, nothing is impossible. If you simply take that, that, that quick declaration, 
that's extremely biblical and you begin to declare that over your life, even if you practice that daily, you say that declaration over your life, what will begin to happen is your heart will begin to transform. It will begin to align with what, how God sees you. And then your mind then will slowly become to be transformed into believing actually what you're saying. There's such power in declaration. You see, one way to defeat fear in your life It's through the prophetic word. It's a weapon that God has given us. See, Timothy in the Bible, he had fear. He dealt with fear. And and, and Paul had to remind Timothy, this, this, Timothy was a giant in the history of church life, of church culture, church history. He was a giant, but Paul had to remind Timothy and he had to bring a word of encouragement to him. And you can find that word in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses five through seven. And this is what it says. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am sure that it is in you as well. For this reason, now remember, this is Paul talking to Timothy. For this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Other translations say to to stir up the gift within you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear or of timidity, but of power, love, and of self-discipline. You see, the reason why this is important is that you and I have to understand that everyone, no matter how strong that we think that we may be or that we may appear to other people, every single one of us can deal with issues that distracts us from our purpose and our calling. And one mighty weapon at our disposal is the prophetic word. Now, I don't have time right now to simply unpack everything about prophecy, although we will do that in more upcoming Disciple U classes. But I will say this, that the prophetic word is the one spiritual gift that all of us should eagerly desire. Now, that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. All of us eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. So the prophetic word is actually twofold. Number one, it's foretelling, okay? There's foretelling prophetic words, and then there's forthtelling prophecy, forthtelling prophetic words. Now let's talk about, let's unpack what foretelling and forthtelling actually really means. You see, the prophetic word of of foretelling, excuse me, of foretelling is foretelling actually predicts the future, all right? An example of this can be found in the book of Revelation. It predicts the future. It predicts what's going to happen. That's why we call it the revelation. It's a prophetic book to us. It actually predicts the future. Now, when I was growing up, I had multiple people come to me and say, I was praying for you and God wanted me to tell you this and fill in the blank. They would say things like this. I felt God wanted me to tell you that you were going to be in ministry. Now that's a that's a foretelling word. I wasn't yet in ministry, but God saw me in ministry and wanted them to, uh, to, to, to know and to confirm to me that I was going to be in ministry. People would say things like this. God's calling on you is to preach the gospel and just fill in the blanks, etc. That's a foretelling word. It's, it's God pulling you into your future. All right. Now, the second part of that, of the prophetic ministry is a foretelling word. See, a forth-telling prophecy does not just predict the future, it actually causes the future. Now, the book of Ezekiel gives us a great example of this foretelling principle. Right? The prophet Ezekiel is taken to an ancient battlefield where the entire valley is covered with dry bones of soldiers who died in battle. Then the Lord commands the prophet to prophesy life to the dry bones. And as Ezekiel speaks to the bones, a mighty army suddenly rises out of the dust, out of, out of, out of the ashes, out of this boneyard, okay? So this forth telling prophetic dimension actually calls things that, that are not as though they are, all right? So if there's something going on in your life right now and the enemy is coming to, to, to attack your identity, your purpose, your calling, we have the powerful weapon of the prophetic word, a forth-telling word to say, this is what I see. This is how God calls me. It's calling something into existence that actually isn't right now, but God has given you a very discerning word to, to use as a weapon against the enemy. 
Now, these two types of prophetic words are like nuclear bombs in the hand of a believer. And it's important that we embrace this kind of prophetic culture. See, this prophetic culture calls out destiny and it reminds us of God's work within our lives. Now, if we despise or if we, or if we reject to not believe in the, in the prophetic, in, in, in the words of prophecy, what we do is we simply play into the hands of the enemy by laying down a vitally important weapon of our warfare. Now, the opposite of the prophetic word is death words, okay? Is death words. How are death words included into our conversations? See, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, he says, the death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. James says it like this. He says, the tongue is the rudder to your life. It's like we're guiding a big ship, a big, a big uh, cargo ship, if you will, that's called our life. And the tongue is actually the small rudder that can direct how our life is gonna go. So it's, in, it's vitally important for us to speak the right things. Because if we don't, we can actually, we can actually kill and put to death the purposes and the vision that God has set before us. So when it comes down to these words and the renewing of our mind, it actually starts with a heart renewal. We need God to transform our heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the Bible says, the mouth speaks. And I'll even say it like this. Out of the abundance of our heart, not only do we speak, but we actually live. See, everything is a heart issue to God. So let's start at the heart. Let it transform your mind. And let's speak that life into our own lives. Learn to treat yourself kindly because it's okay. God gave us the weapons to do it, and we should apply those weapons to our life. When we speak these things, it's actually God's plan, and he gave you the authority and the power to go ahead and call a foretelling word and a forthtelling word over your life. So I want to challenge you this week with an action step, and that is to control your thoughts and to control them in such a way where if you begin to hear negativity being, you're, you begin to talk negativity about yourself, you begin to say self-destructive things over your life, that you reposition and you realign with what the Word of God says over you and what He's saying to you. Listen to God, lean in to what He has to say and allow Him to minister and speak over you and speak the words that He's speaking over you because I guarantee it that He's not speaking death, but He's speaking life and He's speaking life to the fullest. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I appreciate you. Join, me, join us next week. It'll, Pastor Lupe will be with us next week. I'm so excited for that. He's going to be talking about uh, joy is serious business. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>